Another confusing milestone event is going on right now in Marvel's Strike Force. This time it's so confusing that the devs have even confused themselves with not just one blog post on Friday to help us understand what is needed. Yesterday, another blog post was released to help the community understand what's required, but even that had some errors. So another blog post was just released with even more corrections. And if you wanna make sense of it all, don't worry, I'm here to explain it all to you. And I'm back from vacation, so we're digging into the mailbag for your questions on this special Tuesday edition of the Monday Mailbag. So if you're ready for it all, and you want to do Valley Club, find that like button and let's go smash it! Valley Flyer. What is up, Valley Club? I hope you're having a great day. I hope you've had a great weekend. We've had a extended weekend, which is why instead of doing a Monday mailbag, we're doing a Tuesday edition of the Monday mailbag because we're out in Vegas this past week and celebrating our brother Mobile Gamer's wedding. I uh, haven't posted the pictures yet on social media, but if you haven't already followed me on Twitter, Instagram, I should be posting those pictures later this week. So if you want to check out some of the fun behind the scene hijinks at the wedding, make sure you follow me on social media. But we are here here to talk about this confusing event and because we did not record the video yesterday for the Monday mailbag, we're doing the Tuesday edition today to answer all of your questions from Discord. And if you left a message or left a question on Discord, I wanna thank you for leaving that question. And if you wanna get one of your questions featured on an upcoming Monday mailbag, make sure you are a member of Discord. The link is down below. But let's talk about this confusing event because this event was so confusing. We actually have two simultaneous events going on right now, the Commander's Cash and a Strike Salute. These events were so confusing that the devs, not only did they have to issue the normal blog post describing this event on Friday, but because it was so confusing, there was another blog post that came out yesterday and that had some errors. So yet another blog post was just released about an hour ago and that had more information. We'll see if that's the final one or if there's still more information to correct. So let's go right into the game and talk about this blog post. So this was a blog post that just just updated about 11.30 a.m. Pacific time today. The daily objectives, which were described in yesterday's blog post, did not include the 2,000 salute tickets today. Uh, it was supposed to be giving out today. It was not giving out today, so it should be fixed by tomorrow. So if we look at the original blog post, this is the one from yesterday. Uh, it talked about Monday having an inbox message for 2,000 of these fragments. That was there. Uh, it also said that 2,000 we're completing daily objectives every single day for six days, but we did not get one today. So the corrected version of this now says for five days is st still totaling that 10,000. And instead of this totaling the 2,000 is now totaling the 4,000. So at the end of the day, the total salute tokens still added to the 22,400. And if we look at where it was yesterday, the 22,400, uh, and uh, so we're all made whole, but instead of uh, it being in this inbox and then with the daily objectives, because it was missing from today's daily objectives, we're gonna get another message in the inbox, but the total should be the same. You're also getting 600 of these tokens on a free claim on the website. That is for seven days, 600 times seven, that is 4,200, and then 600 per day in the Web Milestones Killer Package, that's another 4,200. So when you total up these, the 4,000 from our milestones, the 10,000 from our daily objectives that we should be getting hopefully tomorrow, or, or if you're from the future, then hopefully you're getting it today. You're getting 4,200 from the web uh, milestone and then the uh, other web milestone is the 4,200 here. So that is where you can get this all. To reach a 29,000 point total, you need 6,600 more points spending campaign energy during this event. Gives you two points per energy spent. If you spend 472 per energy per day, which you should be spending more of that if you just wanna get your raid keys and uh, do all that stuff for your alliance that are earned you 944 points per day. For seven days, that'll get you 6,608, which is more than the 2,900 that you'll need in game. So if we go check out this strike salute right now, uh, right now, I don't think I've really done too much for this event, uh, just my normal daily objectives, and I'm at 5,000 already. Uh, I'll start pushing for this uh, right after I record this video, but 29 is where we need. So uh, as long as we get those inbox messages and we get all the daily objectives and all that stuff, 
uh, shouldn't be too much energy to spend to get all this stuff. So we're getting some Icarus shards, which is nice, some Cersei shards, Weaver shards, and then some farmable characters as well. Now, the other one that we have going on right now, the Commander's Cache, this requires a little more work. And yes, unfortunately, it does have a leaderboard. And there's some crazy totals, as we see right here. The event's not even going on for an entire day, almost a day, but not an entire day yet as of me recording this. We got some crazy totals here. I don't think through to the seven days of this event, I'm even gonna get up here. And that's because these ranking rewards, seven star T'Challa, seven star T'Challa, all the way in the top 10 here, you're gonna get seven star T'Challa. Six star T'Challa's go for the top 50. And in the top 1%, you're gonna get five red star T'Challa, the Black Panther 1 million BC version. So people are pushing for this event. Now, what do you need to do to push? Well, if you look at these milestones here, you get points by spending gold and if you're spending just a, like a normal two million gold that should equal about two million points or exactly two million points uh, by spending that gold which over seven days is 14 million points towards this event all right war battles you also get points by spending uh, by doing war battles if you're doing your extra refreshes getting 14 war battles uh per war you could do three wars per this event Per war, you should be getting 1.4 million if you're doing all 14 attacks, which means that through three wars, you should be getting 4.2 million just from these wars. Now, you will need to spend some power cores to refresh that bullet store to get all that extra raid uh, war energy, excuse me. That should get you more points towards this. But if we're just taking account these war battles that you're doing, uh, 14 per day or 14 per war should get you for a little over 4 million and then the last but not least is this power core spending which you don't need a lot in order to get this uh these milestones and if you don't want to spend any power cores you could make that up by spending more gold if you don't want to do all your war attacks you could spend more gold i guess whatever you have hoarded gold or power cores or your extra war energy with your war attacks that's what you should spend to max out these milestones so uh where do we need to get well the big milestone that you need to get down to is that milestone 33 this is the ancient claw necklace this is going to award a lot of points in that black panther event so this is where you need to get to minimum and if we add up the 4 million the 14 million and then the 2 million so the 4 million from the war battles the 2 million or a little over 2 million from the power core spending and then the gold spending that 14 million that should get you right around here give or take now if you're doing a little more gold spending a little more power core spending uh you could easily complete this without doing your war battles but if you add in those war battles i think everyone can get to this uh 22 million uh, doing all those milestones, like I said, in that order with that amount of gold and the amount of uh, power core spending, which you probably could be doing more, that should get you right around 21 million. So a little bit more pushing, even maybe even less more battles, more gold, more power core should get you to this milestone 34, which is usually where they end a lot of the free to play stuff here. So everyone should have a five red star Akoya if you're if you're pushing decently in this event. And then all this other stuff here is just, uh, I don't know, I'm not worried about it. I'm not, I'm not pushing that much in gold and power cores for that. Although these ranking rewards are pretty nice. So you might wanna spend a little more on that but uh, all of that goes towards this first panther milestone here and uh, we see the ancient claw necklace is worth forty-five thousand points through this so we still need to get the razor sharp claws and the heart shaped herb uh in some events coming up so that is it hopefully that helps you to get where you need in this event this is not that grindy of an event as long as you're on top of your normal daily activity you should get all if not uh, most of the good stuff in these two milestones so a little confusing the devs even look like they confused themselves on this but this doesn't look like a very bad event actually it looks like a pretty generous event and you don't need to spend power cores so that is it for these two confusing events hopefully that helps you to clarify what you need to do for this event it helps you to break down the activity that you need either spending gold or spending power cores or the war battles is going to get you those big 
uh, milestones, but you could you could mix and match whatever you like the best. If you like war, you could do more war tax and spend more and uh, earn more points from war. If you like, uh, if you're just spending gold on a normal basis, you can get a lot of points for spending gold. And if you're just refreshing your energy normally, you can get points just from uh, refreshing your energy with your power cores. But uh, hopefully you do well. Hopefully you have enough activity to get those Icarus and Cersei shards and have some decent placing in these ranking rewards. But let's talk about these first questions of the week because it is Tuesday. It is the Monday mailbag. And first question of the week, Scopely, I've mentioned quality of life in this game. When there are back-to-back -back events going to slow down i'm burning out slow it down yeah so now the if if these two past events these these uh the last one that we had with all the extra blitzing the one we have this week if they were described uh as they were implemented which is not that grindy of events i don't think it would have been that bad but the way they were both described in the blog post made it seem like it was super grindy and uh, turned a lot of players, including myself, off. But with this clarification, hopefully, uh, hopefully they've learned from that and can give us the accurate information on that uh, as soon as possible. But I, I don't mind if they're not too grindy. When they're blitzing events that you have to blitz more than four rotations per day, that is not fun. When you have to spend extra cores, that is not fun. When you have to expend extra energy or gold, that is not fun. So hopefully Scopely has learned from this and can give us the accurate information beforehand. And then these events that are not designed to be bad won't anger the community as if there are bad events because they didn't say that there would be no more bad events. It's just that these two were not supposed to be bad events and uh, should be pretty much worth the time that you're spending. All right, hey, Valley, I am not sure why Scopely can't copy and paste the same offer to go web store. Maybe they're just being greedy and trying to take advantage of the milestones with the web UPCs for Vile Visions. In the in-game deal for 150 Morbius and 150 Dr. Voodoo is 12.99 Canadian dollars, while the web store for the same offer is with the UPCs is 13.99 Canadian. Is this the same for US funds or let me pull this trick on the Canadians? So I'm not sure what is going on with Canada because there's the issues there with the Amazon App Store. I know they don't have the App Store for Amazon coins in Canada. And I know sometimes the conversion rates are a little weird. And, and I also know that sometimes they're not always the same on Android and iOS. Now, I, I'm assuming, just to give Scopely the benefit of doubt, which I'm not sure if they need it, but I'm assuming that a lot of those price changes are from uh, Google and Apple's end and uh, having some different, but with that said, it should it would make sense that it would be cheaper on the web store because they don't have to pay those fees to uh, Google, they don't have to pay those fees to Apple, which means it should be cheaper on the web store because Scopely is not losing a cut of that. I don't understand why it's a little more expensive, but if a lot of their math errors are any indication, it's probably just an oversight from them and they forgot something or they forgot to cross something or, or, or it's T-Mobile's fault. That's probably what it is, guys. All right, hey, Valley. So since the change in the Blitz rewards, we're supposed to average out 15 Blitz credits. I've seen this reported several times. Yeah, because that is what the blog post said, that they're, they're shooting for an average of 15 with those uh, Blitz wins. Uh, however, upon doing two full rotations today, 44 teams both times had averaged less than 10, 9.95 and 9.96. So since they have changed it, uh, is it we're getting more? I'm actually getting less. Uh, I don't know if it's getting less. I don't think I've seen one less than 10. Uh, I know it hasn't always averaged out to 15 for me. Sometimes it's been uh, less than 15, but more than 10. I'm not sure if there is Blitz credits less than 10. Uh, I may be mistaken on that. I just don't remember it being there. I know the old total was 10 every single Blitz match, and then they made it for an amount between 10 and 1,000. I don't think it was less than that. Um, yeah, if, if I'm wrong, though, let me know in the comments. But uh, it, it, it was supposed to be like that. And again, when you're looking at large numbers, sometimes it, it averages out. Like if you get a thousand, that's going to really skew the numbers and put your average up from 10 to, you know, whatever it would be 50 or whatever, you know, how, based on how many you've opened so far. So uh, I, I think it's supposed to be higher. But again, the 15 is the average. So I'm assuming most of the time you would get somewhere between 10 and 15. So not exactly 15. That way it gives some room for the variance when you get one of these big pulls. So 
Yeah, I, I think I think uh, I, I'm not sure about the math. I've never seen anything less than 10, but I couldn't be mistaken on that. But it does seem like it's not exactly 15 a lot of the times. I do think it's over the 10 that it used to be, though. But yeah, I, I don't think it's at that 15 average that the devs did report in their blog goes. As Scopely does no QA testing of any kind, which is blatantly obvious for the amount of things they've implemented every update and a reset. How many times do you think they do did to get an average if they did more than shock to use the random number generator sounds about fair the average was 15 from boylan's own video at 1247 so small number or not it is still a lot less than 15 on a rotation of 44 with uh, 38 wins times two that's a loss or missing 304 points where you calculate 604 blitz yeah so there's there's definitely something weird with this but i i I don't know if it's less than 10. Um, just, I don't remember seeing any blitz totals that go less than 10. So it, it, it definitely, I definitely get your point that it's less than 15 though, but uh, something, something seems to be off here. And of course, Scopely doesn't share all the backend numbers. I'm not sure if any game shares all the backend numbers with the community, but um, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to know if it's, uh, if what they're saying is accurate or not. We just, uh, we don't know the exact number to do the math ourselves to verify that, to see if it actually does average out to that 15. But uh, I guess we're just taking our word because we don't have all that backend coding and stuff that they're doing in the game for the actual real numbers we're getting. Valley find a crazy idea for you with a game well over 200 characters. Is it time to remove minions from the game, excluding summons? Task maps are moved to the underworld team and uh, now removing the only team that had minions of any use is the mercs. So they disappeared, it would be no loss. They could reimburse all the time and gear into them. Give ultimate shards for their star level, elite orbs for their red stars. I see this as a big win for Scopely, which they need. No one wants to play with Archer versus playing with the Hulk. What about your thoughts? All right, so I, I, I when I first read this, I thought, oh, there'd be people would be mad because of all the investment they had in these characters, or I don't know, maybe they just love Shield Trooper or something like that. But I think this could work if they if they do a reimburse the gold and the gear and all that stuff, and then just make them go away. I think that would be good for the game. I think this is something very, very low chance that Scopely would ever do, though. I don't think they would want to remove characters. Uh, in general, I, th I think it would be a lot of hassle to remove the characters. Now, removing them from the orbs is something that's been called for for a while. You know, nobody really gets excited when they see these shards. And, and even as like a non-jackpot pull this your bad pull this is this is really bad because they have no use in the game so this is not the worst idea i actually like this idea give us back all the re uh all the resources we put towards these minions you can remove them from the game definitely remove them from premium orbs and some of these other farming locations and uh because they're just kind of getting in the way from our characters and maybe double up on minions and a real character so maybe hand archer would go with nobu or uh shield trooper when you're farming him uh you get green goblin or some something something scopely logic that doesn't really make sense would work but yeah just just include the minions with these other characters don't make them farmable you just uh when you get a shard for one of these other characters you get some minion shards for free take them out of the premium orbs uh that would be good yeah and take them out of the red star orbs because nobody wants red stars for any of these minions so i think i think we could do with that i think that's a simpler solution uh than refunding everybody but uh yeah they they suck minions suck and i think they were added there in the beginning because they were there were not enough characters that they had in the game that they could add and they wanted a large robust roster now that they're not even adding any minions they're just adding real characters they they can do something like this but uh, I think the big thing would be the gold, the gear, the T-Force, all that stuff that we put into these minions. All right, next is from Brother Al. It's a very sad message. We'd like to thank you for all the content you have provided during the pandemic. I've decided to quit the game after four years. It's been a pleasure watching your content and being a contributor to the mail. I questions from time to time. Keep up the positivity. I am trying, my brother. I am trying. Uh, the game is in a terrible place, but people like you keep me engaged until I could not play it any longer. It was a realization, the time commitment that I no longer could adhere to. Uh, with the work being so much busier, it led me to finally make a decision to say enough. I will use this newfound freedom to play other games like Snap, continue to focus on success in my career. Best to you and your family this holiday season. Hey, best of luck to you and your career. 
And Marvel Snap is freaking fun. I'm having a lot of playing Marvel. It's fun Marvel playing Marvel Snap. So hopefully I can get more content more consistently on this channel. So you guys, you guys can get up to speed and snap as well. Cause I think it's a fun game. All right. Uh, but yeah, best of luck, brother. And best of luck to everybody that's followed the channel over the years that just is done with the with the mess that Scopely has created. Uh, hopefully, hopefully there's some end in sight. Hopefully there's some shining thing that we could all go to that's not Apocalypse or Dormammu, but hopefully there's something coming up that uh, will kind of infuse new life into this game. Because I've always said this game goes through ups and downs. We've been in a massive downswing for a while. And even things like this, that I believe these events that have going on, these commander cash that are designed to like help the community, the way they're communicating in the beginning, until yesterday, everyone is thinking it's a horrible, bad event, and uh, they would need to increase the communication, I think, and and do more friendly events. Because I think these events were designed to be friendly. It's just the communication pissed off the community. Uh, wow, CC was a good part of the game and destroyed by overpowered buffs in the ropes. 900 Dark Hold at full health for its Red Hulk, and he wins destroyed content. Uh, did enjoy CC, won't bother anymore not worth the effort so one thing that uh has helped me and, and i'm and cosmic crucible for me is the most fun game mode uh placing maybe one or two meta teams on defense and then the rest of them on offense so i have gamma on defense i have tangled web on defense and i have dark hold on defense the rest of them uh the unlimited secret avengers weapon x eternals uh, everyone else, Dormammu, Doom, all those are safe for offense. So uh, if, if some of these teams are a little too challenging for your roster, you might want to place some people off of defense and uh, just go for the wins. You know, I think it's more important to full clear just for all those crucible credits than to like place the most challenging defense and win all your battles, but you're not getting full clears and your opponents aren't getting full clears. I think winning is more important and winning and getting full clears is more important so uh if crucible is not as fun for you and for me it's been the most fun and the most frustrating game mode when i when i'm losing in there or do bad in there i get so frustrated but it's also the most uh fun that i've had so if you're not having as much fun in cosmic crucible maybe take some of the teams off of defense so you have more for offense and then it just becomes about all right can i fold this clear this person can i fold the clear this person all right can i full clear them more effectively so i can get more points and win this crucible battle but it's trying to get those full clears i think those are more important than having solid defense and just getting the wins but that is my opinion yo valley how's the gains coming showing your biceps got some questions all right the bicep time and they're actually a little uh not as in shape as normal which is like i said we just got back from vegas there was no working out there was no training it's just a lot of eating so i gained a lot of weight so they're they're not as uh, defined as they normally are but uh, Abomination's passive, gets the rest of the Gamma team drain, but if he dies first, does the rest of the Gamma team get the drain? I would say no, and in my testing, I have not seen them still get the drain, but there are some passives and it's not clearly defined in the game that still go on even after their character dies. One of those is Nobu, even after he dies, he still can bring your team back to life. So uh, I would say no for all, it should be no for all passives, but there are some exceptions. I don't think Abomination is one of them. So after he dies, he should not be giving them drain, in my opinion. And uh, I, I, in my experience, that's not how it works. But maybe, maybe. I mean, Nobu's is a clear example of a pass that still works even when the character dies. We've seen a lot of new teams replacing old teams. The upcoming Death Sea team replacing some X-Men teams. Uh, I think that Death Sea team is only replacing the X-Men because they're not going to replace the Unlimited on, on uh, Crucible or anything like that. Gamma replacing Web Wars. Um... Not really, not really, because Gamma is a war team. Web Wars were only okay at war. Web Wars are very solid bio Gamma team, and Gamma is not a, uh, or a Doom Raid team, and Gamma is not very good in the Doom Raids. War Dog replacing some Wakandans. Well, Wakandans weren't really great on war. War Dogs are gonna be a great war team, and uh, they're not gonna replace them in Crucible. Bionic Avengers be replaced by anything soon? I don't think so. They just released the Bionic Avengers as the tech solution. They're obviously going to be replaced at some point when we get some new raids or something that they can't uh, take on. But I don't see them being replaced anytime soon. Actually, uh, they I could actually go full sim with the Bionic Avengers and beat those three nodes. 
uh, just even on Doom 3.4. And my Bionic Avengers are almost at 1 million marks. So I think they're very strong. The AI recognizes them to be very strong, especially with the sim results. So I don't think they're going to be replaced by anything soon. All right, hey Valley, hope all is well. Brother, I hope all is well with you as well. Just made uh, Captain in my alliance. Want to start using the msf.gg alliance tools, but can't figure out how to access or add my alliance. Uh, the only option they send me is to start a new one. Does it first have to be added by my alliance leader or I'm missing something? Do you have any idea or is there any guidance how to use the new tools? So uh, this, it's a little different than in-game and msf.gg. If you go to your alliance in-game, that's the one that you're in, uh, in, in, in your in-game alliance. Unfortunately, though, that in-game alliance doesn't transfer to msf.gg. If we go to msf.gg now and look at what is on there, uh, you could create an alliance. And normally what you do with your alliance is create an alliance that has the exact same name as yours. Uh, I was in my old, old alliance for the longest time on msf.gg. And I thought that wasn't because it updated. When they updated these tools, I was still in that alliance. I'm like, oh, because there's a separate alliance on uh on msf.gg so if you look at this one right here 420 dab skull this is the leader this one only has one out of 24 uh players in that so i'm assuming in game they're pretty close to 24 but as on msf.gg it is separate so if you're in alliance in game you'd also have to join an alliance in msf.gg so uh yes you would need to create an alliance in msf.gg if no one in your alliance has already done that call it the same name use your same uh leader name and everything like that and then just invite people to that alliance and then hopefully they also join in game it's, it's almost like a two-step process here because it's not uh, the alliance that you have in game that confused me for a little bit hopefully that uh, provides some clarification for you my brother let's move on to the next question uh, but yeah, that, as far as I know, there's no guide on how to do, do use the new tools. Uh, maybe I'll have Taiji on uh, Taiji and Pimtoxy back on the channel to help talk about some of their new tools on how to use them for the community now that we have that roster thing going on. Hey Valley, no question today, but a big thank you. Built my favorite character at the current max level, Magic, of course. Level 90, gear 17, 775, T2, ISO, rank 4, getting the costume, and just got 20 million TCP. I feel like I've won a game card draft. Congratulations to you, brother, for joining the ranks of the retired. Wanted to thank you four years of information, four plus years of information and entertainment. Uh, keep on smashing. Keep on smashing to you, my brother. Off to bigger and better things. I hope much better things, and I hope much bigger things as well, my brother. All right, uh, Valley, want to give you a community final PSA. As I quit the other day, don't waste your time deleting your account again. Scopely takes 30 days and does a bunch of needless follow-up emails asking silly questions like, how much gold do you have? How much energy? etc it's a scummy end of the game that has seen so much better days by doing this they're trying to get you back in game as a pathetic attempt to try to make you want to do daily activities again i don't understand why this company has resorted to the worst tactics possible uh, i don't know the worst tactics possible this seems like a common tactic when someone quits, quits like a subscription service or something like hey don't you miss us don't you miss don't you miss having this stuff so that's that's what you're trying to do i don't know if it's the worst possible i mean this is the same company that brought us Goldgate and Thanos Giving and the the Gold Catalyst Gate. And we just had the Armory 14 and 15 gate. I mean, those those are those are much worse things. Uh, I thought this value of information key that needs to be disseminated to others keep on smashing. So if you do quit, uh maybe just don't log in. Uh don't don't cancel your game, don't delete your account if you don't want to get those emails. All right, hey, what is up from a fellow Texan? Thanks for all the videos you've given in the last few years. I love the time of the month videos with Mobile Gamer. Oh, yeah, we we missed that this month because this way <laughs> uh, we should have done a live one, but you know those those are the more important things to do. Uh, my question: Did I miss something with the war season ending? We used to get some T fours, but the last couple of times I received nothing. It's been quite difficult lately to get the T fours after resulting changes. So I believe that we did get some rewards uh the last war season because that's when i had to actually switch my alliance but uh i think the raid season might have been missing this past week so uh hopefully we get some answers on that what is going on with that but i do think that the the rewards were missing from the raids uh this week but i think i'm pretty sure that we got the rewards for the um for the war last week all right hey valda 
Valley House of Flying. Hope you're having an awesome day. You as well, my brother. I got two questions for the Death Seed team. Who do you think will be the final member? We know it's going to be Healer so far. I mean, the rumors have been Nightcrawler for so long, and I want it to be Nightcrawler that I guess my guess is going to be Nightcrawler, the character that I want to be in the game. Plus, I've not seen Drew in a hot minute, so I don't know where he is, where's all his leaks, where's all his rumors that he has, but uh, since we have nothing new to go on, I'm gonna go with the old rumor and go with Nightcrawler. If you guys have any other guesses, let me know in the comments. Who's gonna be the rest of the members for the Strike Team Apocalypse event? We know Weaver is the first one, uh, or is she the third? Well, she's the only one that's been announced so far. Uh, I've seen many, many questions asked many, many times on who else is gonna be required for this Apocalypse event. They never let us know. Not even the envoys of the signed NDAs. They don't let us know uh, what is going on with that. So we know Weaver. I'm assuming if the character is already in game, it would probably be a hard to farm character like a Mr. Negative. Uh, it would be real scummy if they did something like a uh, zombie Iron Man or something like that. So I guess we could go. Uh, I would go. My guesses would be not, not my hope. I, this is not who I'm hoping would be in there. But I'm going to guess Weaver. I'm going to guess Kestrel. Deathpool, and I'm also going to guess Mr. Negative. I'm going to guess four characters. We'll probably need five, maybe more, but those are going to be my four guesses. Let me know who your guesses are in the comments, guys. Uh, also, who are you going to be the rest of the members for the strike? Oh, uh, not sure if Kestrel and Deathpool were the first and second members since they are exclusive characters, but if they are Kestrel and Deathpool, Spider Weaver, and two more characters, I'm assuming be an awesome team addition to Dark Cold, Death Seed. Oh, the possibilities. Well, it's not It's not supposed to be a team. It's just supposed to be some characters used to unlock. So kind of like when they have those events come in and they have those special um, traits or they have like a pocket dimension, have special traits to use. You're going to be able to use them in the event. I don't think they're going to be a full team, though. Now, the exception was this past uh, pocket dimension where they had Wave 1 Avengers and the hero as guardians that you could use. So, or uh, just as guardians that you could use. So... That's an exception there, but most of the time we're just getting random characters, putting them together and making teams. That's what I think is going to be with this uh, extra selection for a lock apocalypse. And that is it. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this. Hopefully this clears up some of the confusion about this strike salute and this commander's cash for you. Hopefully you do well on this event and get that Okoye and get that, uh, that uh, necklace there for the Black Panther event. Uh, and... Yes, if you are on to bigger and better things, we are covering Snap on this channel, so make sure you still stay subscribed for more Marvel gaming content, including not just Marvel Strike Force, also Marvel Snap, because that is a very fun game. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and hit that notification bell so you know as soon as a new video goes up. We'll be back tomorrow, back in the normal schedule, back to normal stream, streaming and everything schedule starting tomorrow. So yeah, I will see you guys then. Have a great rest of your day. Check out some of the merch on TeePublic. They always have sales going on. And if Amazon Coins is available in your region, make sure you check out the link for Amazon Coins so you can save up to 20% off of all our in-game purchases. Have a great one, guys. Hulk Fist Bump Valley flying out.